Praise God. We welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church, and we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. So good to see so many of you out there. Praise God. We've got people on from Wilmington, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Jersey, Georgia, uh, and many more states coming, and many who are watching by recording friends all over the world as we present the word of God ladies and gentlemen the word of God hallelujah the world is going topsy-turvy being flipped upside down as people all over the world are demonstrating for human rights ladies and gentlemen for the rights that God has given to all mankind they are demonstrating against police brutality and racism and discrimination. They are demonstrating they're standing up for human rights. Even in Perth, Australia, and Auckland, New Zealand, Nairobi, Kenya, Paris, France, London, England, uh, in the United States, and in nations all around the world, even in China. <clears throat> I saw in China they have a Black Lives Matter demonstration going on in China and ladies and gentlemen this thing is not about black lives this is about human life human life it's a demonstration for the rights of mankind that uh, all men are created equal and as Thomas Jefferson wrote that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and nobody ought to be denying people of human rights. By the way, back to basics, ministries, we do not condone or endorse violence. No, in no form, we do not support violence. We do not condone violence. And we go on record to say we do not condone hatred and racism and bigotry. We do not condone uh, police brutality. No, no, we stand for Jesus Christ and righteousness. We stand for holiness. Oh, no, 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 we are not perfect. We're not, but we're believers. We have put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have decided to follow Jesus. So here at Back to Basics Ministries, we're a piece of property, land under construction. In other words, we're, we have not appropriated. We have not arrived. But one thing we do, forgetting those things which are behind and stretching for those things which are ahead, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ, which is in Jesus Christ. So we ask that you come along, go along with us, and, 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 and get on, on board this Jesus train. Praise God, because we're going to glory, and anybody's welcome on the Jesus train. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's no racism on this train. There's no violence. No, we do not condone violence. If violence is your game, get off the train. If violence is your game, get off the train. If deception is your game, get off the train. If deceit, uh, lying is your game, get off the train. This train is headed for glory. So we invite you to come on board. You may say, well, how can I get on board the glory train? The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Praise God. You can be saved today. Well, if I'm saved, should I be out there demonstrating with demonstrators? Well, a lot of saved people are out there, but if you're saved and you're out there, you do not uh, preach hatred. You do not preach racism. You do not throw rocks at cops. You do not put down anybody. If you're going to be out there demonstrating for human rights, you ought to be out there in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ does not condone violence. He does not con condone hatred. He does not condone bigotry and brutality. So if you're out there, be out there. Be for real. Be for real. And if you can't get out there and be for real, stay home and pray. Like we said last week, stay home and pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We invite our friend from up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trugler, to come and 
Lead us in prayer. Ryan, I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Would you lead us in prayer this morning? Uh, good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Yes, i will be more happy to lead you in prayer. Good morning, my <clears throat> Good morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly today. For we, ask, we thank you for making another beautiful day and letting us rejoice in it. And Lord, we ask you to to heal and bless and protect this great nation and all the people that are protesting and just please watch over them and watch over the innocent people, watch over everybody. And Lord, we ask you to uh, give the give courage and strength and the wisdom to Pastor Carter to teach us your word again today. And Lord, we just want to thank you for everything that you've Don't done for us. And just, watch, and just watch over the soldiers, the police officers, and the first responders and everybody. And just bless, protect this online nation or this online church as well. And Lord, we just want to say we, we love you, we praise you, honor you, worship you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you, Tara your precious wife and your daughter, Jenna. And I want to personally commend you, Ryan, and thank you for you and Tara for going out there looking for land for Back to Basics Ministries uh, for the, the, the new ministry, the, the pastor's retreat. So I want to thank you, and I'm going to look over what you sent me today. We appreciate you. We do not take you for granted, Ryan. You are our brother, and we thank you very much. And may God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, bless God, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about love today. We're going to talk about love. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be a little bit like Buckwheat today. Buckwheat said, I woke up a nub. I woke up a nub. I woke up a nub. That's what Buckwheat said. Florence Gaffney, you remember the years ago, we used to watch the Our Gang uh, uh, on TV. And we <laughs> we used to laugh at Stymie and Spanky and Darla and all that. But Buckwheat, Buckwheat said, I woke up a nub. I woke up a nub. I remember one time, I, you may say, what are you talking about, woke up a nub, Pastor Carter? One time, well, actually it was the day, uh, a couple of days after my oldest granddaughter was born out at Fort Ord Army Hospital in California. I flew to San Francisco, and on the way back, when I got off the plane, I walked through the uh, 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 the mezzanine. And I saw this T-shirt had buckwheat on it, and the T-shirt uh-huh. said, "I woke up, I woke up, nub, W O O K A, P A N U B, woke up, nub." And I laughed, I laughed, and it was not a racist T-shirt. It was not a racist T-shirt. That's the way buckwheat talked. He said, "I woke up, nub, uh-huh. I woke up, nub, me, I'm looking for love." I'm looking for love. No, I'm looking no for love. Gospel. I'm looking now. Let, years ago, Florence Gaffney, when you were a teenager, you, you danced off a song called "I'm Looking for Love." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking for love. Mm-hmm. I'm looking, for love. I'm looking. <laughs> Sam Gale, you remember this? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for yeah. Looking for love. But you know, you know, a lot of us have been looking for love. We're looking for love. Those demonstrators, they're looking for love. Okay, uh, 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 the George Floyd family, they're looking for love. Uh, uh, no. Even the family of pol- policemen, policemen have been brutal- brutalized. They're looking for love. This nation no. is looking for love. And nations yeah. all over the world are, are united in the fact that we have not received from our fellow human beings what we are do, and we think we do what everybody else is do. So you got the whole world woke up and up. You got the whole world doing the Romans eight thing. All creation groans, ladies and gentlemen, to wit. All creation groans. It is stated in um, Romans chapter eight. The whole of creation is looking for love. You know, because we have been mm-hmm. deceived. Nations have been deceived. Even in China, they, they, they got people in China uh, marching, and, and the Chinese have been notorious for denouncing mm. human rights. But, you know, America is going to be flipped upside down, topsy-turvy, because we've been practicing this thing for over 400 years, and we know better. Mm. Americans know mm. better. And God has said the time, it's time. It's time for a change. So, ladies and gentlemen, as a believer, I want to emphasize this, and I want to emphasize it very strongly. As a believer, whether you be white, black, or brown, 
as a believer in Jesus Christ, we do not walk in hatred. We do not walk in racism. We do not walk in, in, in destruction. We do not condone violence. No, we do not throw bricks at people's buildings. We do not loot people's stores. As believers, you say, well, there's a lot of Christians out there, and that's the danger. If you're a Christian and you get caught up in the crowd, you can be swayed by that crowd mentality. If you're going to be out there in a demonstration, then you need to take Christ Jesus with you. And, and, and hey, hey, the, the best thing the Lord's telling me to do is to stay home and pray. Keep your behind at home, Leroy Carter, and pray. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing you can do for Jesus right now. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of Christians can easily be swayed by the haters and I don't want to be associated with any hater. If, if, if you hate whites, then, then I, I'm going to unfriend you. I'm talking to my black brothers and sisters. If you hate whites, I will unfriend you. I'm talking to my white brothers and sisters now. If you hate blacks, I will unfriend you. Back to Basics Ministries, we stand for the love of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, we all have in our background. We can point to atrocities. We can point to brutalities. We can point to lynchings. We can point to abuse. But as a believer, we have taken vows, ladies and gentlemen. We have taken a vow. We have decided to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, uh, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then we're going to take a look at what the Lord says in his word today. In John, 1 John, in 1 John, as we walk up and up, we're woke up and up. We woke up enough. We're looking for love. I woke up enough. I woke up enough. Yeah. I woke up enough. Yeah. yeah. Pastor Cotton, you done lost your, you done flipped, you done flipped your cookie. Yes, I have. Because I'm woke up enough. I'm looking for them. Okay, let's get serious. Let's get serious. Ryan tried to get us serious with prayer. Then I messed it up talking about woke up and up. But let's get serious. Uh -huh. Dr. Jean Bratton is going to come, and she's going to read the scripture, hear the word of God, um, which is in, found in First John chapter 1. Dr. Jean. Amen. I will be reading First John chapter 1. In its entirety. Can everyone hear? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. That which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be complete. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. You have heard the word of the Lord, and it is blessed. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Jean Bratton, uh, Living Water Fellowship in Living Water Ministry in Wilmington, Delaware. She read the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I encourage you to read all of 1 John today. Read all of 1 John um, and how John taught, teaches us how to walk in love and how to uh, test the spirits by the spirit. And, um, you know, if you're out there and you're among some people and then they say, let's do this, you test the spirit by the spirit. See if that's of the Lord. 
A lot of people are uh, in prison today because they did not test the spirit by the spirit. A lot of folks are a lot of folks are are, are married to unbelievers because they did not test the spirit by the spirit. A lot of children have been uh, 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 born out of wedlock because uh, their parents did not test the spirit by the spirit. So we want to look at the word of God. The answer is in God's word. We're going we're gonna, to uh, use this as a topic today, looking for love, looking mm. for love. We're going we're gonna to do the, the English version or whatever language Buckwheat was talking when he said "woke up and up," we're going to change. We're going to translate that into Eng the English modern English version. We're looking for love. Praise God. Praise God. A lot of people will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that they love you. A lot of people will tell you that they love you. I remember Sam Gale uh, when we were kids. Well, I'm older than you, but when we were, we were teenagers, my friends and I, we would practice. Man, we would get in front of the mirror, man, and practice trying, uh, pretending we're looking at a, a young lady with a, a straight eye, no flinching, and, and giving her that look. You know, everybody, everybody had that look. You know, they had that look. And um, they, they had that look. My, my friends in junior high said, yeah, you look like, you look like a black Elvis Presley. You got that Elvis Presley look. And so I just cocked my head on the side and, and closed one eye. And uh, my son, Wesley, he tried to practice that. Years later, I taught him how to give, put, put that look on the ladies. Give them that look, Wes. Let one eye brow droop, you know, one eyelid, let it droop. And just peep, just peep through that eye eyelid and get that little smile on your face. Wesley Carter still has that Leroy Carter smile, and I got it from Elvis Presley back in the 50s, you know, and uh, <clears throat> love me tender, love me true, and, and so we used to practice that, but we would get in front of the mirrors, mirror my friends and I, my buddies and I, and, and not only would we practice that look, but Sam Gill, we were practicing that rap, that little conversation. In those days, we called it a session. Gene Bratton, it was called a session. Hey, he got a session. Not only is he cool, and he got that little smooth walk. You know, he dips when he walks. You know, many of us who dip when we walk, we're sorry now because we threw our back out of place dipping, walking all crazy instead of walking straight up. We were dipping. Now, now we got a limp and can't get rid of it. But praise God. Anyhow, and we would talk into the mirror and we pretend we're talking to a girl, and we tell them, Florence Gaffney, we tell them how much we love you, oh, baby. You're so fine, you're so sweet, uh, you're so you. pretty, and 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 and, and we just and we call it talking stuff, talking trash. We call it a conversation. And if you didn't have a conversation back then, the ladies, the girls said you were lame. You were lame. He's lame, man. He don't know how to talk trash. And so we practiced talking trash. And <clears throat> talking trash was not just for the sake of talking trash. We had objectives. You know, we had objectives. We talked trash because, well, maybe you wanted a kiss. I just want to kiss. I just, I just be the first one to kiss her. And so all my friends, said, hey, man, he kissed little Susie. And uh, and and others had a, a deeper meeting in the. In, they wanted something else. But uh, you know, and 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 then some guys went overboard. Baby, I want to marry you. I'm mean, 16 years old. You want to marry somebody? That you can't even get a job selling newspapers. You, you know, you can, you can't can't even take your mama out to lunch, and you want to marry somebody. But we were talking stuff. My purpose in saying this is is you're going to meet a whole lot of people in this life who are going to tell you, I love you. And you're going to hear a whole lot of people in this life tell you, I love you. And most of the people who are going to tell you, I love you, have a motive. They have a motive. They, have a, they don't know how to love. They're looking for love. But uh, many people who will tell you they love you want to manipulate you. And that's why I'm very careful when I look at the news or listen to the news. I want to see who's for real and who's manipulating. I want to see if your love is just political. <laughs> I, I, I don't want, a, kind, I don't want a, a political kind of love. I don't even want a Sunday kind of love. Some people will give you a Sunday kind of love. They hate you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But come Sunday... Man, they put on that Sunday face. Churches are full of folks. Well, when they're open, they're full of folks have that Sunday kind of love. And, and, and we'll sock it to you Monday through Saturday. So, so 1 John is all about love 
And then First John exposes liars uh, throughout this throughout this uh, a writing by John. Uh, the Holy Spirit gave him a condemnation of lying, not of liars, but lying. And and we're to test the spirit by the spirit. So, ladies, everybody who comes up to you say, "I love you. You're so sweet. You're so fine." Oh man, you're so fine, and 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 you had girl, you haven't changed since 1960. Now you know if they tell you that, ladies, I'm, I'm not, if if they tell you that, or, or hey, dude, you look the same as you did in 1965. They lying, they lying because you know our mirrors tell us. You know if you're in your 70s, you know you. Ain't no way, ain't no way you still look like you did back in the 1960s. But but people have a motive. And be careful how people approach you. Even our children learn how to manipulate us uh, when they're small. I, Mom, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Now, can I go to the movies? Or, or, or Grandma, Nana, I love you. Uh, you got $5? <laughs> and so children learn early in life that if you tell someone you love them, you can ask them for something. But the danger is many people have been manipulated defeated, frustrated, devastated, even destroyed because they believe the lie. Now the scripture says, and Dr. Gene read it, verse 10 of chapter 1 in 1 John, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. If, if you're going to say, I haven't sinned, I haven't done anything wrong, I don't know about all those people, but I haven't sinned. I haven't done it. The Bible says if you say that, you're a liar. Why? Because the Bible also says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at Jesus when they found the lady, the woman in adultery. They brought that woman to Jesus. They didn't bring the dude. The dude was gone. He, they didn't even arrest the dude. They drug the woman to Jesus, laid her at his feet, and said, Master, we found this woman committing adultery. Now, duh, 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 duh. Uh, you can't commit adultery by yourself. I have not even heard of anybody con committing adultery by yourself. And so, so we caught her in the act. Well, uh, Jesus didn't say anything. He just knelt on the ground and start writing something with his finger in the sand. And, and, then, and then he looked up, and he said, Let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And the crowd dispersed. Every one of them, every one of them who accused her, left her alone. And Jesus said, Woman, where are your accusers? She said, They're gone, Master. There's none here to accuse me. And Jesus said, neither will I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Do not forget, brothers and sisters, that because we have given our hearts to Jesus, he has forgiven us of our sins. And so because he has forgiven us, we ought to forgive others. I'm not saying that you forget your, your history of your family your history of your ethnicity, the history of your nation, the history of your community. Know your history. Know uh, who did what to you. Know the, the, the position people have towards you. Know, know them. Know your enemy. Know all about your enemy. But then Jesus said to us, I say unto you, love your enemies. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them that despise you. Pray for them that persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. So being a Christian is totally different, totally different. And, and a lot of you will say, well, being a Christian means you're weak. No, no. The Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. When God finishes flipping the script, and, 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 and those who are in power and brutalizing people and abusing people and looking down on people, the Bible says they will uh, 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 grow up and they'll be cut down like grass and they will not even be remembered. 
but God will remember you because the meek shall inherit the earth. So love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I know if any of you are like me, if you're anything like me, you love yourself. Jackie Carter would tell you, hey, my husband, Leroy, he loves himself. <laughs> and she's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. And I see her in front of the mirror. I see her. And, and, and Jackie's a pretty woman. She's, she's a lovely lady. Yeah. I see her in front of the mirror. And, 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 and she loves herself, too. And we love each other. But, but uh, you know, I, I, I could probably say Jackie stays in the mirror a little bit longer than I do. So I mean, length in front of a mirror is not any measurement of how much you love yourself, but she stays in front of the mirror a little bit longer than I do. But that kind of love... Uh, <laughs> yeah, she got more hair, she said. Yeah, because I, I don't have to spend time grooming my hair. You go, girl. <laughs> you go. <laughs> Praise God. I love you, Jackie. Okay, but we are to love each other, but we're not to love one another so that to the point where we worship one another. One of my friends, and he died from coronavirus early this year, and he was one of our circle of, of, of guys who hung out together. He would get up every morning, and he would say in front of his mirror, you beautiful thing, don't you ever die. Well, he passed away, but he was a good friend. He passed away, and he was beautiful for a season. He was beautiful for a season, but he passed away. And every one of us will pass away, ladies and gentlemen. Every one of us will pass away. Okay, I'm going to ask you to mute your phone so that there be no disruption. So that because we're recording, ask you to mute your phone. Press star six. Press star six, will you please? Thank you. Okay, so we're talking about uh, looking for love. And in, sec in the second chapter of First John, the second chapter, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And when John says my little children, he's calling the church. The church are called the little children. In in of uh, um, um, Second John, I think he writes to uh, a godly woman, and that's his expression for the church. In 1 John, he writes to my little children. You see, John had to write in, in secrecy because there was so much deception out there. I mean, they did not have drones flying by, spying on people. But if they knew, if certain people knew that John, the disciple of Jesus, wrote this letter, and if he had not written it to uh, the technia, the Greek word for my little children, or uh, if he had not used certain phrases, they would have hunted him down and, 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 and destroyed him. And so even in those days, ladies and gentlemen, they had spies and they had fake news. And John, one of the things he had to contend with in writing this letter, uh, first, second, and third John, and even the Gospel of John, he had to deal with, he had to deal with, um, the Gnostics, G-N-O-S-T-I-C-S, G-N-O-S-T-I-C-S, the Gnostics. They were the unbelievers. They were those trying to preach their own version of the truth. They hated Christians. They were out to put to death Christians, and John had to con contend with Gnostics. So did Paul. Everywhere Paul went. There were the Judaizers. They hated Paul's guts. Wherever John went, there were people who, who hated him. You know, they took John uh, at one point uh, in Ephesus. They uh, tied John up in the crowd. They hated him so much because he preached Christ Jesus, and they boiled a big pot of oil oil, ladies and gentlemen, and they put John in that big pot of boiling oil to French fry him, okay? Uh, and John would not fry. John, the oil, did the hot oil did not touch the apostle John. And they looked, they looked, because the Holy Ghost was in that pot with John. And history says John did not die. They released him. He didn't even have a burn mark on his body. That's how the Holy Spirit kept him. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will keep you and me 
if we walk in love, if we're honest with God, if we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, if we confess our sins, and, and he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity. So we're talking about today looking for love. Verse 4 of chapter 2. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If someone says, I love Jesus, and doesn't keep his commandments, the Bible says he's a liar. That's plain. Ladies and gentlemen, why is it so difficult for Americans to recognize that the liars we have in leadership position are not of God? And I got people who, well, God put him in office. Well, God put Nebuchadnezzar in office. God, God uh, put I Idi Amin in office in Uganda. The Bible says God establishes kings and God removes them. And, and then wake up and, and smell the coffee. God puts people in office to bring his people to their knees. God will put certain people in office to bring people to their knees. God put Rehoboam in the office after Solomon to bring the nation to the point uh, of separation. They had made up their minds. They were going to worship idols. They were going to do everything they wanted to do. They got away from what, how David taught them and Solomon taught them, and God established Rehoboam as king. And so Rehoboam took them straight down the drain, blue, flush, blue. God, and Rehoboam took them straight down the, the sewer, sewage system, ladies and gentlemen, because Rehoboam had no love for God or God's people. And ladies and gentlemen, we can look at it as we have studied Second King, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles on Wednesday night. We look at the many men whom God established on the thrones of Israel or Judah, and some were godly people and some were not. But God established them in those positions for God's purpose. And so when we look at the United States of America and what we have leading us now, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, there are people, there are Christians who, who, who want to put the gun to my head because I challenge, I challenge uh, whether there's Christianity in the White House. I challenge it. I challenge it. Uh, one of the president's advisors uh, just uh, uh, shared a prophecy this past week. She saw, she saw Donald Trump and Jesus riding through the clouds. Donald Trump was riding a white horse, and so was Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, at, at a certain point, this so-called Christian prophecy or American Christianity can be just plain pathetic and plain stupid. She saw Donald Trump and Jesus riding across the clouds, both of them riding a white horse. So you can get all kinds of prophecy to support who you are. But ladies and gentlemen, my Bible tells me you shall know them by their fruits. And some of the fruits by which we judge people are the fruits of their lips. If someone says, I love you, and then uh, 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 when you're brutalized and, and your son has a policeman with his, his, his knee on your son's neck choking the life out of him, and, and, and the leader you elected is hiding in a bunker, how much love is that, ladies and gentlemen? Somebody talk to me. How much love is that, ladies and gentlemen, when, when, when you don't get any response from your leader and you see people being beat down and you see the cops coming out and, and now you, you see the National Guard and you, see a, and, and you see an elderly white man being pushed in Buffalo, New York, pushed by a policeman, and, and this was a white man. He was pushed by a policeman, and, and, and his head cracked the sidewalk, and you saw blood gushing out of his head, and, and one policeman tried to uh, kneel down to help him, and another cop pushed him away. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about hatred. We're talking about hatred, and hatred has no color. Hatred is a demon, ladies and gentlemen, and and. and and, and, and demons are colorblind. Satan's, Satan's purpose is to destroy every one of us. And so there are a lot of white people think they're in the safety zone. 
No, there's no safety zone in America. There are a lot of black people think they're in the safety zone because you got position, you got money. No, there's no safety zone. But if you're born again, hallelujah, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for God is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. And even like Job, Job said, though he slay me, yet I will still trust him. Praise God. Paul, Paul, the apostle Paul, everywhere he went, he had people out wanting to kill him, wanting to get him. At one point, they had to let him down the wall of Damascus in a basket so he could escape those hit men who had a contract out for his life. And then we see Paul writing uh, when, when uh, he was uh, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. So Paul was telling us, we as Christians, if we walk in love, if we walk in love, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the enemy's doing, no matter what the opposition is against us, no matter whether it's a coronavirus or whether it's a hostile crowd or an individual with an a, a automatic weapon, no matter what it is, Paul said to be absent from the body is at home with the Lord. He said, we're in a win-win situation. And so I want to encourage you to stay in a win-win win situation with Jesus. Walk in love. Don't hate anybody. Walk as the Lord has taught us. Look at verse 9 of chapter 2. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let hatred, don't let anger, don't let darkness blind your eyes. If you're tired of the bad news on the news, turn the news off. Turn the news off and, and, and do like I do every now and then, you know. Watch uh, 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 Hogan's Heroes or, or watch Carol Burnett or watch Gilligan's Island or, or watch the old reruns of Gomer Pyle, U.S. Marine Corps. I mean, learn how to laugh again, okay, uh, or, or, or find something to do. You know, uh, you don't have to listen to the news at all times. Open your Bible. Pray. Worship God at home. Pray. You know, there's no better thing you can do than to open your Bible, read the Word of God, and, look, and read about the greatness of God. <clears throat> Get filled with His Holy Spirit. Get filled every day with His Holy Spirit. Worship Him and give Him praise. And then you'll experience what Dr. Gene Bratton prays for every one of us. You'll experience sweet sleep. Sweet sleep. I can't tell you the number of people who are having trouble sleeping these days. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Carter will tell you, I don't have any trouble sleeping. And when I do, I get up and pray. She'll tell you, hey, he, he's out there. And, and, and in our household, it's, it, seems like, it seems like there's a race to get into the twilight zone. You know, uh, I usually wait up for Jackie uh, to put her, her head on the pillow. And uh, uh, even before, sometimes even before I can say, Good night. She's gone, man. She's or or now look at don't y'all be laughing at my wife. Or Jackie, Jackie would tell you, hey man, he wakes up because I hear him snoring when I come in the bedroom. He wakes up in time for me to go to bed. So you know, it's sweet sleep. It's sweet sleep. It's refreshing. It's it's kind of sleep, Melanie Bias, where you wake up, you say hallelujah. Lord, I don't know what's going on in the world, but everything's all right uh, in my Father's house. Everything's all right be between me and you. I feel your presence, Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I don't know what's going on out there in the world, but I thank you that you're right here with me. That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Buckwheat might have been woke up a nub. He might have been looking for love, but we've found love. We've found love. Love found you and me. The songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin, 
far from the uh, a peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. Do you remember when you were out on that sea of sin, sinking? The songwriter said, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me. Now faith am I. The songwriter said, love lifted me. Love lifted me. God said, you seek me and you shall find me. And you shall find me when you seek me with all your heart. There is not a person on the face of the earth today, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what they have done, no matter what they're doing, there's not a person on the earth that God is not willing to save if that person will say, Lord Jesus, I believe. You are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you were buried. You rose again from the dead. You ascended into heaven where you sit at the right hand of the throne of God. I believe you're coming back again. Save me, Lord. There's not a person whom the Lord will not save. That's love. That's love, ladies and gentlemen. That is love. That's the love of the Father for all of us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Yes, the whole world is marching, marching. Many are marching for human rights. Many are marching for ulterior motives. Many have infiltrated uh, peaceful demonstrations to get their uh, right wing uh, 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 agenda, but God knows the hearts of the people. And God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Human rights, black lives matter, white lives matter, peace, joy, healing, all these things shall be added unto you. That's God's promise when we seek him with all of our heart. And God said, you shall find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let me ask you a question. Woke up enough? You looking for love? Woke up enough? I woke up enough. What you talking about, Pastor Carter? Man, I'm talking about buckwheat a long time ago. Buckwheat said, man, I woke up enough. Well, Buckwheat had a speech impediment. He couldn't talk work too well. But we understand now what he was saying. I'm looking for love. I don't know if Buckwheat ever found love. But 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 you and I, we found love. We were sinking deep within, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained by sin within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard our despairing cry from the waters. He lifted us. Now free are you and I. Now we can love. Now we know love. We know him because he first loved us. We know the love of Jesus Christ. So let us walk in love. Let us not hate one another. And if you find yourself hating someone, angry, bitter, repent. Confess your sins. That if you will confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. John wrote that also uh, in, in his scripture. Um, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's uh, abide by what Paul wrote in Romans. Thou art inexcusable, O man. There's no excuse for throwing that rock at that man's building. There's no excuse for firebombing that police car. There's no excuse for putting your knee on that man's neck and choking him to death. There's no excuse for dragging those college students from Morehouse University out of their car and tasing them and, 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 and macing them and pepper spraying them and then beating them and abusing them verbally. There's no excuse. Thou art inexcusable. 
Oh man, no matter what this world has done to you, nobody owes you anything. You're not entitled to, to be a, a hater, to be a racist, to be a, a brutalizer, or, or an abuser, or an oppressor. No, there's no excuse. For God has so made this, his, his world that he offers eternal life, even the forgiveness of of our sins, even forgiveness for hatred. So stop the hating and let's walk in love. Stop the hating and walk in love. If the crowd said, let's go and loot Walmart, don't go and loot Walmart. No, you go home. Go home, open your Bible, read the Word of God, enjoy the peace of the Lord, and pray and experience sweet sleep and experience the love of Jesus and then show others that love. Don't be partial. Love is without dissimulation. Don't just love a handful. Don't just love people whose skin is the same color as yours. Don't just love people who uh, 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 live on your block or in your neighborhood. Love all people. Show them love. Walk in love. Walk in love. If you don't know how, Ask the Lord to teach you how. And a good way to learn that is to read John 3.16 and then read John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and trust the Lord. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. My subject today has been looking for love. You can find love in Nairobi, Kenya. You can find love in Auckland, New Zealand. You can find love in Perth, Australia. You can find love in Hong Kong, China. You can find love in Moscow. You can find love in Washington, D.C., and you can find love where you are. Call upon the name of the Lord. God is love. God is love. God is love. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. I pray, Father, that nobody under the sound of my voice, will be lost. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Then forgive everyone else. For all of us have sinned and come short of your glory. Now teach us how to walk in love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Stretch forth your mighty hand, Father, to save, heal, and deliver. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to end the recording but I'd like you all to stay on so we can chat and chew a little bit. If those of you who are listening to the recording, you want to get in touch with me, you can follow up on my Facebook channel or uh, the, the, uh, with email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or give me a, a call, 404-205-1101. God bless you.